Hello. We are live. Hello. I'm Lori and I'm going to do uh, some more painting on this landscape painting. This is Francis Point Marine Park and um, I'm going to be painting, showing you how to um, correct some mistakes actually in the trees. They got a little carried away on these trees. And so that's what we'll be doing today. I've got my niece Rachel with me and um, I'll be answering any questions that you might have. So thank you for being here. Um, and here we go. Into it. <laughs> Let's do it. I need a nice small-ish knife edge brush. And it's nice and wet. And I have pre-mixed some phthalo blue green shade with a whole bunch of white to kind of go back in and paint some of these sky holes because I got a little bit over um, overzealous on painting these trees and so here's my reference photo and I want more space between some of the foliage and so it's not too late to go back and fix that. I would rather not have to go back and fix it so when I'm doing it the first time I should be a bit more careful <laughs> but this day I don't know I was not being careful for some reason so now I have to go back and redo and so what I have to remember is that acrylic paint dries darker and so when I touch um, little parts of the canvas and I want it to blend with the other part of the sky um, I, I want to make sure that it looks lighter than what what is around it because it's going to darken Four people watching. Awesome. Hello, everyone. Hey, it's nice not being alone. <laughs> I really like doing live streams. Um, this painting I started back in April. If you watched any of the other, there's three, four other live streams of this particular painting. And I had done the underpainting in April, but I just, I got stuck and I wasn't inspired to finish it. And so now you guys are all holding me accountable to finishing this painting. Um, sort of 35, 45 minutes at a time, uh, twice a week. Uh, we've been doing live streams on Wednesday at noon and Saturday at noon. So we will do another one of, of these on um, this coming Saturday. So while I was talking, I was just mixing up another pile of paint because I was noticing that my paint was a little bit too yellow to use up in the sky here. And, um, yeah, but anyways, thank you for coming. If you have any questions, uh, Rachel will read me the questions and then I can answer them for you. All right. So I love painting from reference photos because because I live in a place that has just every corner is so beautiful. Every pathway um, has its own little magic. And so I like to create imagery of, um, of the beauty that people who don't live on the waterfront say could, could own a piece of art and put it on their wall and feel like they, they do live on the waterfront because most of what I paint on these large canvases is ocean scenes. And just so that you know, all of the paintings that I create on my YouTube channel are for sale. Um, so if you have any art buyers in your family or if you yourself are an art buyer, I, you can contact me um, on the about page on my YouTube channel. There is an email address and you can email me if you have questions. Um, the, the original paintings are generally quite affordable and I will ship them anywhere if you're curious about that. Could I close the, the doors over here? Just feel like it might Sure. Be. Yeah, you can hear some traffic outside. 
there's a lot of nice little sky holes in here that I I painted out and often um, if the trees aren't looking quite right it's because there's not enough sky holes showing through so that will definitely help to put some of those back in they're quite light so I'm trying to lighten my paint enough And then if I if I overpaint sort of where the trunks need to go right now, I can I can correct that. That's the nice thing about acrylic painting is that you just keep if you make mistakes, you just keep covering it up. I don't like making mistakes because I like to be efficient. <laughs> but it happens. Does anyone have any questions for us, Rachel? Not yet. I have a question though. I have, don't think I've ever learned that. When did you start painting? I started painting in 2012. Um, I always wanted to paint. I, from a young child, I actually told my mom that I would be an artist. And um, I just never really had the opportunity though. Like even in high school, I always did art all the way until grade 12 and I even won the art award in grade 12 and that was pretty exciting. But we did things like pastel and drawing and sketching. Um, we never really learned how to paint. We didn't, yeah, we weren't given, oh, our brushes were horrible. We had these like kindergarten brushes, but I don't know, let's see what we had. So it's like ones that you get like when you're like... The heads would have been about this big, but they would have been all splayed and uh, just yucky and messy and like, and, that, and none of them were smaller than that yeah. brush. <laughs> and so, yeah, so, um, I don't know, I just had it in me. Oh, I did watch Bob Ross as a child huh. um, at Grandma's, who um, lived right here on the Sunshine Coast. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, anyways, uh, I used to watch Bob Ross and I'm just the magic of putting a few dabs of paint in the right spot on a canvas just mesmerized me. I love sitting as a little girl watching him for hours and he made it so it makes it look so easy. So easy, yeah. Totally easy. So anyway, so it was always in me. I, I ended up going to school to become um, a custom home designer, which is what I do when I'm not painting. Um, but I've been working more on becoming a full-time artist for the last seven years. Um, and so, um, trying to think of what actually, I, there was a few things that kind of reminded me, like I kind of was not selling out, but kind of not following my true dream. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the things was going to the high school and seeing all the beautiful art uh, that the art teacher was able to help the kids learn how to make um, at our local high school. So when our, our oldest was in high school, when Jamie was in high school, I, I just would be amazed that every student in the art class could create a work of art. Like everything was worthy of being bought <laughs> yeah. and like gorgeous work. And I was just mesmerized. And I remember saying to my good friend at the time, you know, when we pick up our kids at the school, I want to come back to high school just to go to art class. <laughs> so that was one thing, just kind of woke me up a little bit, like, hey, you're not doing it. And, um, hmm, what happened next? A couple things happened. I, uh, we went to Israel that, uh, in 2012. And I don't know, like, it, it seemed like it's not just a coincidence, that's the year that I started um, kind of going after more dreams and things, uh, more things of, that I thought I would want to do when I was younger. And um, how I started out was YouTube. I started watching other people paint and and actually one of, the more, one of my favorite te teachers was a guy named Jerry Arnell. Like he's still on YouTube, I don't know if he's still creating videos. I haven't looked him up in a while, but, um, so he paints in this style, sort of. I think I might have made it my own now, but, um, he paints from dark to light and kind of, it's kind of like an oil 
painting style, but we're painting with acrylic. So yeah, he was really, really helpful. I ended up buying, I think, two or three of his step-by-step -step videos, like, because on YouTube he might give away a, a little bit of the painting, but um, if you want to do the whole painting from start to finish, you had to buy a video, and I did buy a few, and after doing one or two of them, I was like, okay, I get it. I see the pattern. I don't need to paint his photos. I want to paint my own. <laughs> so... And it didn't take me long, it was 2015 that I started this YouTube channel where I wanted to teach others what I had learned because, I don't know, whenever I learn something, I just can't keep it inside. I just really want to share it. So YouTube's such a cool way of doing that. So by, by painting the sky holes in after the fact, it kind of, kind of makes the trees look a little bit more... Um, natural. I don't know, it just kind of creates more abstract shapes that maybe I wouldn't have made on my own. And yeah, it's starting to come along a little bit nicer than before. It was just way too much green and there we go. I loved being in the art class at high school. Mm -hmm. It was just a very like nice environment of like there was no like wrong way to do it. Like there was yeah. never like being like, oh, that's a really bad painting or like you should have done it this way instead of that way. Like people are allowed to make it their own style. Like uh, okay. of course if you ask the art teacher and ask for her opinion, she'd yeah. tell you, but mm -hmm. you could just go off totally on your own. <laughs> and do kind of your own thing. Wow. So it was like really, really fun. I even find the art class that I have now in my new high school mm -hmm. isn't as fun. Like it doesn't mm -hmm. have this like everybody's enjoying art. It's kind of like people are just there to get it done so that they kind of have that art credit huh. for school. And the art teacher, he's a little bit older and so he does it, I think he's kind of just at the end of his rope where he's mm -hmm. just kind of done with teaching. Um, and so he's he can be very critical with what mm. people are doing, like in what order you do stuff and, and that sort of thing. Um, but he is very good at like pushing you to finish a project. Mm -hmm. If you've started it, like he's like, I want you to finish it. Even if you don't like it, it's fine. You just gotta <laughs> finish it and be done with it. Yeah, I wonder what would propel a person to be an art teacher um, if they didn't really like... I mean, I guess maybe he's just tired of doing it, but... I, I just say that because my art teacher in high school, I think he was a really good artist, but he definitely didn't really like kids very much. Yeah. <laughs> and um, we got along okay, but most people didn't get along with him. And it's such a cool subject. Yeah. <laughs> but it's too bad that... I mean, it's so weird because sometimes the people that are like the best at what they do, like an amazing artist, an amazing doctor or whatever it is, they're usually like awful people. <laughs> like people versus like they're like they don't want to like I know this doctor he's amazing at what he does yeah. but he is awful at just like being, being human. nice <laughs> and being like humanly like he's very and I think he's he does like surgeries and stuff so also he just doesn't really need to be happy and like oh how are you doing because he's usually <laughs> working, working on, on somebody's sleep, sleep. <laughs> um so, yeah, I think it's just weird how that turns out sometimes. Sometimes the people that are best at what they do don't really like other people very much. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely, um, I don't know if it comes naturally to most people to care about others. <laughs> <laughs> to learn that and, I don't know, try. <laughs> yeah.
I mean, I don't know how people could be, I mean, I'm awful at being confrontational. Like, and so I see, if I see anybody being confrontational, I'm like, I have no idea how you do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it just freaks me out. The older I get, the more I can do it. Like, if it has to be done, you know, mm -hmm. like, for the longest time, I wouldn't confront anyone because I didn't want to hurt their feelings. Um, but then sometimes to have a better relationship, you have to confront. But with the intent of, like, having a better relationship. Yeah, not just to be, like, mean and yeah. spiteful. Ah, uh, so I keep going back over these bits because it's drying way darker than I even think it's going to. So I have to keep going back and lightening. Because the, the horizon's very light, and then it deepens as it goes up. And so I'm trying to keep any of these sky holes brighter, and they just keep getting quite blue after they, <laughs> they darken. But sometimes, I, I think I've, I've said this before on other live streams, when I feel like it's not working what I'm doing, then I just move on to a different, a different color or a different quadrant of the painting. Because I want to stay here and show you guys what can happen um, in a shorter time span. I'm gonna stay here and just change colors. So, what color do I work on? I think I'm gonna do some of the um, the mid tones. There's a bunch of like a this green underneath all this yellow, and then I can do some of that highlighted yellow. So that color. mostly um, hooker's green and I'm going to put a tiny dab of this really bright green called chromium oxide green and the, the type of paint I use is golden acrylic paint it's this really thick high quality um, acrylic paint and if you're looking for supplies if you're getting into painting like I was in 2012 <laughs> Um, in the description below, after you watch this video, um, there is a link to an Amazon page that shows like some of my favorite paint colors and my brushes and stuff like that. So if that helps you, go ahead and click on, on that link in the description box underneath the title of this video. And um, it'll take you to Amazon and you can order from there if you want to. Sometimes it's nice to know exactly the things that you need to use. Um, and especially if you're just starting out, it's good yeah. to know. And then, you know, once you kind of know what to, to buy, you can buy it anywhere. I mean, Amazon's so con convenient. And thankfully, that's one of the ways that YouTubers make a little bit of money, is that if you, if you use the link that I have in my description, I get a very small percentage as an affiliate to Amazon. Um, so that's really helpful way to support your whoever it is that you're watching on YouTube is, is to click their links if you didn't know about that so one of the things I really like about landscape paintings is that I'm kind of I'm trying to kind of stay in this kind of genre I but it I'm not worrying too much about making it exactly perfect. Um, I'm just picking out certain spots that stand out to me and of this kind of this mid-tone color, knowing that I'm going to come back over top with the highlighted yellow. And, um, but it's not something that I have to get all stressed out about, like, oh no, did I put that in the exact right spot or not? Um, I'm just putting it in sort of where I think it might go, and half the time it's just fine. It just works just fine. So it's like drawing with your paintbrush. One thing I feel like I have to learn is like, just because a painting or a drawing or whatever doesn't look like exactly mm -hmm. like the the reference photo that I have doesn't mean that I've like failed this. No, exactly. Thing. That's really yeah. That is really good. I just finished um, a giant commission. I'm so excited. 
beautiful young couples getting married this weekend, and um, the mother and father of the bro uh, the groom has commissioned me to paint a painting of their beautiful um, something important to them. Anyways, I'm just realizing this is live, and who knows who's watching? <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't be saying things. Anyways. Um, I just finished it the, uh, yesterday, and my husband came in and was giving me all sorts of advice <laughs> on what needed to be done. And I actually followed it and ended up painting on it for another three or four hours, painting over a ginormous mistake that I made mm -hmm. because of his criticism. <laughs> and, but it, but honestly, it, I should have left it. Like I shouldn't have actually listened to his advice because he's not an artist, and he does tend to complicate things. Um, and in in big parts of his life that's probably a great thing but when it comes to art it's important not to complicate it and if it if it looks if it's giving the impression of what you're going for then that's far enough mm -hmm. you don't have to yeah it doesn't have to be like perfect no it shouldn't it. be perfect because yeah. if it's going to be perfect just take a photo yeah I exactly think. Take photos. it has to have the human element in it and often you can just overpaint overpaint and Keep second guessing yourself, and and then if you're if you're like me, I take a photo every half an hour, or maybe maybe every couple of hours. Sometimes I'm really working quite a long time, so every couple of hours, and sometimes I'll look back and I think, why did I keep painting? Like that looked amazing, like three pictures ago. <laughs> so sometimes it's better to stop what you're doing and then walk away, go have a drink of water, <laughs> look outside, come back, and you're like, oh. I thought that looked like garbage, <laughs> but it doesn't. So yeah, um, it is so important to not critique it too early and not to critique it until you've given your eyes a rest. Yeah, that's a really good thing to do. And don't let other people critique it. Yeah. Oh, that can even sometimes make it worse. Like mm -hmm. sometimes you're like, okay, I think it looks good. But then when you're like, oh, how does this look? Do you have any suggestions mm -hmm. for me? And people are like, oh, fix this, fix that, yeah. fix this. And you're like, oh my gosh, I see all the mistakes. Yeah. And you like go over it way too many times. And yeah, yeah it doesn't end up looking how you want it to look. Um, and then there was something else. Like I keep saying to my husband, like he comes right up to the canvas, stands right beside me, <laughs> looks mm -hmm. at it. And I'm like, no, go on, step back. And... Um, I know how to look at my painting from close up. I know not to critique it from here because it's, it does, there's a lot of ugly on this canvas. <laughs> so if I took the camera and I just kind of showed it like really close up at on all these little spots, uh, yeah, it was just kind of this cool metaphor I thought of this morning. There's so much ugly on this canvas that you can't see the beauty until you step back. Mm -hmm. And so it's like life. Again, like every time I do anything artistic or I'm out in nature, I keep finding like all these metaphors for life. Like don't look at things too closely. Don't get too critical. Don't get too worried about what things look like close up because my gosh, like you step back 30 feet and it's like, what is that magic? And up, up front it's like, looks like someone threw up on your canvas. <laughs> Often I wonder like why there's so much darkness in the world and um, bad news and sad news and um, yeah and just like not things that aren't uplifting and I remember going for a walk in the woods and it being pretty sh in the shade like I was in amongst amongst all these trees and there was so much just everything was super super dark and all of a sudden a sunbeam kind of broke through and I was like wow, that sunbeam wouldn't be as exciting um, and uplifting if it weren't for all this darkness that I was surrounded in. And so, yeah, metaphors. <laughs> Not that I think we need darkness. <laughs> but Sometimes thankfully. it makes the good things even better. Yeah. Which obviously Let's make doesn't it. make it, doesn't make darkness still good. No. But, um, 
Yeah, and, and then there's that there's a scripture verse, something about um how does it go? Um darkness can never extinguish the light, but light always wins. I like that. There's mm -hmm. something about like if you had a dark room or even a, a dark gymnasium and just one light's turned on, that the light wins. The light overcomes, yeah, that's what it is. The light overcomes the darkness. So how powerful just a little bit of light is. And when people are thinking the worst, like if you, I mean, would people shoot for the bottom or expect the worst out of things um, makes even when it's just a little bit better, it makes it like way better than they thought it could be because if they're just expecting a extreme negative, then everything's better than that. So, so are, do you think that's a good thing to just kind of not have high expectations? I don't think it's really a good thing. I mean, it can make the people feel really good about themselves mm -hmm. because they do better than they think, but it mm -hmm. doesn't give you that confidence that, like, you can shoot for a higher expectation. Mm -hmm. than, yeah. I find a lot of kids do that with uh, grades in mm -hmm. high school. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, if I'm going to fail the course, they get, like, a C plus. They're like, well, it's better than <laughs> failing. to make it by I've got my hooker's green which is about the deepest green I have but I'm going to mix it with some black so that it doesn't because the um, hooker's green is kind of translucent and when I mix it with black then it, it doesn't go see through and I don't know, can you see in the camera that I've got a paper towel down here? Okay. Just like just out of view. Okay. A couple of the most important tools I have is one is a stay wet palette, which has like a, a layer for your paint, and then there's a spongy liquidy layer underneath so that it keeps the, the paint wet. And then the other, believe it or not, most important tool to painting is a paper towel. <laughs> and I guess the water bucket because <laughs> I'm constantly dipping into my water and constantly smoothing out um, smoothing out my brush to get that nice flat edge knife edge shape and also so I can control how much how much paints on my brush and then the reason I like these brushes is because sometimes I use the corner to just add really small dots sometimes I use the flat edge, sometimes I di use it in a diagonal, and then my shapes can be very different sizes, different splotches, different angles, just to, in landscape painting, well, in any type, type of painting, you always need to kind of vary, um, have different variations of shapes, otherwise it looks too, um, I don't know, too weird. <laughs> so I thought I'd take a second to show you that. I want to put some of these dark lines back in because that's going to make some of this foliage pop. If, if the trunks that the trunks and the shadows are back where they belong. Because I painted over some of the trunks with my sky holes. So even just a couple lines and all of a sudden you can see, oh yeah, that's a tree and it must go up through there, but it disappears for a minute. And then there's some shadow that goes over this way. And then you have to very, very have another, more variations on um, your trunk sizes. Some are quite skinny, some are fatter, some are even angled, so this one. Falling 
up a little bit. A big um, challenge for painting is um, just learning how to see, learning what to look for sometimes. And even the smallest little details sometimes can. So I, I want to do this really small little, there's a really wispy little tree. And so how I do that is I, I barely even have any paint on my brush. It's mostly water. I will, I've wiped most of it back off on the paper towel. And then I barely touch the canvas with, see, with my knife edge, so it's going to make a really skinny line. And I just oops, went a little bit too wide down there, but you get the idea. You can do a very fine line with this brush. That's, I like the versatility of this type of a brush, and then I can even just go and dab in using it this way, using the corners to make the smallest little leaves of that little tiny tree. I don't know if you can see that on the camera. Yeah. It's such a small detail. It is very thin, but you can see. Okay, yeah. not good. So yeah, I, I, I noticed like even just having a dark, dark trunk and then a light trunk next to it gives the variation of a real forest. When I put my paper up, is it covering up too much of the of what I'm doing? No. Like often I'm like this. <laughs> That's how I paint when the camera's not in the room. <laughs> because it just helps not to have to look down and look up and look down and look up. Like you can actually kind of get more done if you have it closer. So if I would suggest if you're starting out painting to do that. trying to do impressionistic realism. Okay. So what I'm seeing is that these these trees are kind of almost exactly the same distance apart from each other and that's not good. I'm gonna have to do something to make that different. I might even just add a trunk in between these two because even though there isn't one actually um, yeah, it just looks kind of weird having them too evenly spaced like that. Put a few leaves on the top of this made up tree. So we have no questions today. Yeah, I think Wednesdays are going to be quiet here. Oh, okay, they're quiet. What happens to the brushes eventually is they get messy on the end and then they no longer do what I want it to do. Actually, that's a good brush for uh, bigger painting if I'm doing like um, lots of leaves and say like the, the, it's just one tree and I want really messy leaves. So I won't throw that brush out, but I definitely need to find a better one to do what I'm trying to do right now. Sometimes I work on different parts of the painting when I get frustrated, and sometimes I pick a different size brush when I'm frustrated, <laughs> and then I can make different types of paint strokes. Because it looks like I don't have a nice knife edge brush. All my knife edge brushes are <laughs> all messed up. Okay, so I see I'm missing some dark spaces in here. I'm going to put some of those in with my messy brush. These are these shadowy areas aren't dark enough. Lee draws says that this is beautiful and asks what type of paint that you're using. Oh, I'm using golden acrylic paint. Um, nice heavy bodied, uh, very high quality paint that I would definitely recommend. What kind of paint do you normally use? Have you ever? Painted, or I don't know what you'd call it. Would you use when you use like oil stuff? Mm -hmm. How, do you call it painting or what? Oil, like oil painting? Oh, yeah. Have you ever done that? No. Oil painting? I haven't. I, I would like to try, but 
Oil painting, it always intimidates me because I thought it was smelly and messy and hard to clean up. <laughs> but I think that this method that I use to paint is very similar. I, I don't know if I would have trouble actually. Well, the only thing is acrylic paint dries really quick and so I do a lot of layering where in oil paint you can blend for a long, long time because it takes forever to dry. Um, so that might be actually something I would have to get used to. I need to find my hook for the screen. I don't have enough left. I think I need to mix, uh, mix it with some, oh no, I was gonna mix it with some black, but right out of the bottle it it's covering up these spots pretty good. And there's this cool little um, detail in here where I don't I don't think it's a tree, but it actually had the shadows look like a tree shape. So I'm gonna pick that out and put that in because that's just the sort of thing I look for is just unusual little shapes that I can add in that might not even make sense to me. But when I step back, I think, yep, that's what it needed. And I even take note of like where there's like dark little splotches like I was just doing right here. There's, there's like a triangle dark shape and a couple of spots outside, outside of this area. And so now I'm going to go through and look for little dark spots that I can put back in. There's a little squiggle there that I don't have in yet. A little squiggle below it. It's also good to um, have all the different colors that you have on your brush in kind of different areas on your painting. So that's why I'm now looking for the same color wherever I can find it on my reference photo and then um, kind of adding it in different places. Looking for big spots, looking for little spots. So this trunk is supposed to be showing through a little bit. And see how I was telling you it's quite a translucent color? I need to add some black to that. Where is my black? sometimes forget how strong the black is. It's funny how strong white is and how strong black is in, in acrylic, um, golden acrylic paint. There, so it's, I guess that's why I like using this paint because it's such high quality that um, the white and the black are very solid opaque colors. And if you buy the cheap stuff, um, if you put so many layers of white on, Yeah, it's hard to it's hard to paint with white that isn't a solid white. And I like it too because it's archival. And so I think it used to be thought that acrylic painting was not as um, high quality as oil, but now that that there's such high quality acrylic paints out there. It's just as high quality as oil painting. Two little trunks over here that I have to paint back in. And this one's not quite dark enough, so I'm going to darken it.
coming along. I definitely need some more variations of green. Like it's just too few colors at this point, but that's just because I'm not finished yet. So in between these two, there's a nice dark chunk. I'll put back in. at some point. I'll have to put some foliage around that to fix that. Um, so Rachel and I were talking about um, doing a live stream where we're going to um, take a, an old painting that was a gift to her mom of a wolf. It's a moose. Oh, a moose. Sorry, it's a moose. And she would like to kind of um, is that prove the backdrop. Is it? Like that? you said the, the yeah, moose looks the trees. Good? The moose, yeah. I, I mean, I can't really super duper remember. I'll have to look at it again. But yeah. The trees definitely, like, they're definitely not very good. So that'll be fun, because I'm, I'm pretty sure, I'll have to look into it for sure, but I'm pretty sure you can paint acrylic over oil, and it's an oil painting. And uh, what do you think you want to do with it, Rachel, when you fix it? Do you want to, like, put it up in your room? I want to put it up in my room, but yeah. if my mom likes it. <laughs> she, might it. Want it <laughs> she might want that, yeah. At this point though it hasn't been on display because it was kind of not quite right. Yeah. So okay, I'm still trying to I'm trying to And also it'd be awesome to uh I have this painting. It was one of the first paintings I did in high school mm -hmm. of a, a whale tail. Mm -hmm. Um and it's all in acrylic, but it's in my room, but every single time I look at it, I'm like, it looks so bad. <laughs> like, there's no, like, the the waves, the, like, the ocean is really bad. Like, there's not very much color difference. It's like, blue, white, <laughs> and then, like, some bluey green in the background at, for the mountains. Like, there's no, like, shading or, like, any sort of, like, highlight or anything. Mm -hmm. And so I want to try to fix that one up too, because it would just, I, oh, every single time I look at it, I'm like, oh my gosh, it's <laughs> so bad. Whenever I look at like a foliage painting, I always think, oh, that'll be fast. I could, I could do that one real quick. <laughs> and then I get it all wound up in all these little details. It's okay, it's, it's quite um, therapeutic for some reason. I don't know what it is about probably just calming your mind and just focusing on one thing and not being on a computer screen for me. You have to be on a computer screen because you have to <laughs> stare at the comments and stuff. But it's very nice to get my head out of the computer. <laughs> been streaming that for 43 minutes. Oh wow. Just wanted to let you know. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, I'm being very slow on this one, not getting that much progress. I always feel bad if I'm taking too long. So this little tree trunk I'm doing now is kind of more in the background, so I actually made it a little bit blue. And it's kind of an opaque blue and it had some black in it so I'm not loving that but uh, <laughs> mixing colors that just happen to be on my canvas and it's quite muddy because of the black that I had in the, on the brush but um, yeah so in the distance trunks even dark trunks can have like a, a blue appearance Pushes it into the background a little bit. Okay. 
and even some of the um, uh, the foliage is showing up as really, really kind of just darker than the sky blue, right around the edges. You can do a couple that color, and it kind of just yeah, it just kind of gives like a depth. some of the trees. See what I mean? So is, that, is that something that can sh that shows up from the camera? I don't know. Yeah. If it's too um, fine of a detail to yeah, see. Yeah, you can that see thing. it's pretty faint, but you can still see it, yeah. See that crows outside again, just behind <laughs> on the grass. <laughs> so, it's weird. so weird. So weird. It's sitting on it, it's like, like not standing on its little legs, and but it's, it's like, like let its wings are kind of spreading out, spread its out wings. as well. I wonder if it's dying too. Maybe I'll look at it. I'm not like I'm not like <sighs> really sure. Just want to like know why it's why doing, is he doing that. that? Yeah, I really like the um, like to find the smallest little details that make a huge difference in a painting. And one of them is this little thing I'm doing right now with this funny blue color. Like leaves aren't blue, but when the atmosphere kind of shining through and they're they're kind of way back there in the distance, they kind of appear. I guess I don't know why they kind of. <laughs> it just looks like that. <laughs> yeah. It's like tinted blue a little bit. Yeah, just on the just on the edges of some of the, um, the foliage. I guess maybe they're so small, like there's a lot of them, but they're so small and they're so far away that all that the eye picks up is that they're blue. <laughs> and um, it's actually even a little bit too dark, so I'm going to lighten it a little bit. Some areas. People have just been kind of going, coming and going off. Yeah, coming yeah. and going. Okay. Maybe we should wrap it up. Yeah, I'm, what I'm going to do, because it looks so monochrome from back there, <laughs> there's a few shadows in here that have that same color blue I was just working with. So I'll do some of that, and then we'll wrap this one up. And I guess we still have to continue it on Saturday. Probably give this one more day, so we'll, we'll come back on Saturday at noon. Pacific Standard Time and um, kind of do some more rocks and a, and a few more details, see what comes up to talk about. Um, and if anyone wants to join us, has questions, that would be really great. And for now, I'm just going to put a few of these little blue strokes and these shadowy bits on the rock. And I guess what it's still missing is a, quite a light, the high, the lightest highlight color. So that we'll start working on on Saturday. And there's, there's just a couple of these little blue spots. And so yeah, so I guess we'll just leave it right there. And um, I hope that uh, if you can, you can join us at, uh, on Saturday at noon. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit the subscribe and um, hit the like.